right, this is Algebra 2, Lesson 30, and Lesson 30 is about deductive reasoning. Um, deductive reasoning is a term that we use when we uh, apply a process of reasoning that is non-reversible. So when we're using a non-reversible statement. So deductive reasoning we're trying to deduce something. All right, and we use a non-reversible statement. And a non-reversible statement in deductive reasoning is called a major premise. Okay, a major pre premise. When we get a result from that, our result is called a conclusion. Okay, so we use a ma uh, major premise to get a conclusion. Major premises usually are, or well, always are, an if-then statement. If this, then that. Okay, so it's an if-then statement. All right, so uh, we say that the pre a premise is non-reversible. So if we say if a quadrilateral is a square, basically a non it says if something is A, then it has to be B, okay? So in their example, they say um, it does not say that if B is true, we can't go backwards, okay? So if A is true, then B has to be true, but we cannot go backwards. If a quadrilateral, quadrilateral is a square, then the quadrilateral is also a rectangle. If it's square, then it's a rectangle. Um, we say that this premise is not reversible because we can't say if it's a rectangle, then it's a square. Okay. Uh, the three-step three deductive reasoning process consists of a major premise, a minor premise, and a conclusion, and that's called a syllogism. And that just means that you used a major premise to come up with an answer. So let's go. Let's go. Go over one that makes more sense than the the squares. All right. So they've got all poets are poor. Okay. Roger is a poet. And they came up with Roger is poor. Okay, so does is this valid or invalid? Valid means that yes, we used proper deductive reasoning. So this one is our major premise. And it says if you're a poet then you're poor. Okay, Roger is a poet. He is a poet, so that means that he must be poor. We didn't go backwards. So that is a valid statement. There's our major premise. This one's our minor. Here's our conclusion. And this whole thing is called a syllogism, all three of those together, okay? Now let's look at one that is not valid. So all poets are poor. Roger is poor. Roger is a poet. Okay, so is this one valid? Here's our major syllogism, here's our minor. All right, so what our major syllogism says, it, I mean, our, our major premise says is poets equal poor. Now we've got Roger over here as being poor, 
Does that mean he's a poet? No, it doesn't because we can't go backwards. So this one is not valid. Okay, I'll make up another one. Let's see. All chickens have feathers. Goldie, that's really my chicken, my husband's chicken's name. He named it Goldie. Uh, Goldie is a chicken. So, what I can deduce from that, we've got chickens equals feathers. So that means if Goldie's on this side, then she has to have feathers. And that is a valid premise. Okay. What if our minor, I mean, that's a, yes. What if our minor pre premise was um, Blue Jays have feathers? Does that mean blue jays are chickens? No, because we can say chickens equals feathers. And then we can put blue jays over here. We cannot go backwards. So that is an invalid. Invalid syllogism. Okay. All right, so the ma first mathematics in the Western world was that of Egyptians and Babylonians. Um, the classical period of Greece, blah, blah, blah. There was a guy named Euclid, and he figured out a bunch of postulates in geometry. All right, so what is a postulate? Um, these axioms or postulates are things that, let's see, he called things that are self-evident truths. They're axioms or postulates. You can prove them. Um, let's see, it says, Alyssa stated that some facts about mathematics are true because that they were true and that their truth could be accepted without proof. He called these self-evidence truths, axioms, or postulates, things that are true, we don't have to prove them. Then he proved that 467 other assertions by using deductive reasoning based on a self-evident truth. Because reasoning was logical and was based on self-evident truths, he proved um, were believed to be true even though their truth may not have been self-evident. These probable assertions are called theorems. So, things that are self-evidently true are postulates. Things that we can prove to be true would be theorems. Definitions, those are going to be names that we've given to ideas. Definitions are not proved. For example, Euclid defined parallel lines to be any two lines on the same plane that don't intersect. This definition does not imply the existence or non-existence of parallel lines. It just says that we know that there are th a such thing as parallel lines and we've named them. So definitions just tell us the name of things. Okay. Axioms are things that are known to be self-evident. Postulates, they're also called postulates. And theorems are things that we can prove using deductive re reasoning and postulates. All right, so if you want to look on page 136, I'm just going to set this up here. We've got our postulates. So one, number one is two points determine a unique straight line. So we've already studied that. We know two points make a line. A straight line extends indefinitely far in either direction. We already talked about that. Straight lines go in either direction. A circle may be drawn with any given center at any given radius. All right angles are equal. Given the line N and point P not on that line, there exists in plane of P and N, blah, blah, blah. So we're not going to read all these. Um, but we will be using a couple of these to prove things. We'll do a couple of simple proofs to show you what they look like. So we can use the sixth and eighth postulates of Euclid to prove that vertical angles are equal. All right, so we've got an X. All right. 
So we're going to call this one x, and this is z, and this is p, and this one is y. Okay, so we can say x plus y equals 180. So this is a straight line. That means from here to here has to be 180. So we can say x plus y equals 180. Okay. We can also say that x plus z equals 180. Here's a straight line. x plus z. Okay. So there, that means that they are equal to each other. So if two, th if an equation equals two things that are equal to one thing are equal to each other. That is postulate 8. It tells us that if equals are subtracted, no, 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 that one is postulate 6. 6 says things equal to the same thing are equal to each other. So we can say x plus y is equal to x plus z. Okay. Uh, then we can say uh, postulate ace tells us that if equals are subtracted from equals, the results are equal, so we subtract x from both sides. Super easy, minus x, minus x, and we get y is equal to z. So that is a proof right there. Okay, so y is equal to z. This one has to equal that one because these two together are equal to these two together. Okay? not too difficult. All right. Okay, so we've got a postulate that says, let's see, we've got a bunch of parallel lines, and they're cut by a transversal. That's this line going through them. It's per perpendicular to the one of the lines. All the angles formed are right angles, so we see that on the left-hand figure. So all of these have to be right angles. If it's perpendicular to one line, it has to be perpendicular to all the lines, okay, if these are parallel to each other. All right, if the angles are not right angles, we postulated that we're going to have a bunch of small and large angles. So let's say we got a bunch of parallel lines, and then we've got this guy crossing it like that. We're going to have this angle and this angle. We'll call those A. All the big angles in here will be measure the same. Okay, all of our small angles are going to measure the same as well. Okay, so we're only going to have two different sizes of angles. The angles between the parallel lines are called interior angles, and the angles outside the parallel lines are called exterior angles. So that means that these are interior angles, boom, boom, this one's going to be an exterior out here. All right, so let's draw that with something easier to see here. So we've got one, two, and then we've got this guy, and then we're going to say these are interior angles right there and there, there and there, and our exterior angles are going to be... those ones they're outside so interior on the inside exterior on the outside all right and these are called alternate angles so this angle right here is going to be equal to that one this one is going to be equal to this one um, this one let's see big one that one and that one are equal and then these are equal so we've got big angles small angles That's called alternate corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, exterior angles, something like that. Um, we could also say that this one, B A, is going to correspond to that one. And then B right here will correspond to that one. And C right there will correspond to that one. And D right there will correspond to that one. Okay? Those are corresponding angles. Okay, so it says when parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the pairs of alternate interior angles are equal. Now because vertical angles are equal, so let's try this again. 
All right, so we've got parallel line and we've got a transversal and we can say alternate interior angles are equal. That means this one and this one are equal, okay? And that means this one and this one are equal. Those are alternate interior angles. That means that our exterior angles are also going to be equal because opposite angles are equal. All right. Um, let's see. So we are now going to prove that a triangle, all the an angles in a triangle equal 180. This is the last proof we have to do. All right. So we're going to do that. And we're going to call this one B, this one's A, and this one is C. Now, if we made this keep going and that keep going, and that one keep going and that one keep going, we're going to get some pairs of alternate angles here. All right, so what that means is that if this is A, right, then this is also A up here. We're going to have Okay, let's see. Ah, uh, so we have to draw a line right there and right here and now we have parallel lines. All right. So, we could say that B right there, let's see. The angles marked A are equal because they are equal small angles. They're formed by parallel lines of the transversal M. Aha, so if we have this one, then we could say that this one has to be the same as this one because they're opposite angles. And then if we've got this line with this line, we have C right here. That means this one has to be C. Let me label these in different colors. So that's C. That means this one has to be C because they're opposite. They're alternate, interior alternate angles. All right. And then A, we'll redo that one. Let's see. Here's our A. And then its opposite angle from that one is A. Okay. So we know A plus B plus C has to equal 180 because that's a straight line right there. And these are the same as those angles, A plus B plus C. So all the angles inside of the triangle have to equal 180. So there's our proof for that. It's a little contrived. All right. So go ahead and do the practice problems. They're pretty easy. And then I'll work them for you. All right, so pause the video. Okay, now we're back. Uh, practice problems A says all dogs have three legs. And for these, you're supposed to say valid or invalid. Henry is a dog. Henry has three legs. Okay, so on this one, this is our major postulate, our major premise. This is our minor premise. This is our conclusion. And we have to see if that's valid or not. So the best way we can do this is all dogs have three legs. So we can say dogs equals three legs. Okay, now where is Henry? Henry is a dog, so Henry's here. So Henry has three legs. And that should be a valid premise there. I'm going to double check what the answer is. Even though we know dogs have four legs. All right. Yes, that one is valid because the premise follows. Okay. B says all scholars are poor. Rita is poor. Rita is a scholar. Okay, so 
major premise, minor premise, conclusion. We have to see if it's valid or not. The best way to do this one, all scholars, so we're going to write scholars. I spelled that wrong up here. I was trying to spell it like school. <laughs> and that equals poor. Okay. So then we, where's Rita? Well, Rita's on this poor side because Rita is poor. We cannot go backwards. So this is an invalid conclusion. The, valid, the conclusion is not valid. That would be like circular reasoning. So invalid conclusion on that the major premise has been reversed. We cannot reverse our major premise. All right, so that's it for lesson 30. That's going to be your homework. Bring to class on Wednesday.